What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Can We Talk? It's your boy Eric. We're here with Anthony and Shayna, and we have a special guest today, Caesar Ray. Yes, What's happening? Yes, everything is going great. How's everything going with you guys? Man, it's, it's great. Great. We glad to have you here, Anthony. He was like, "Hey, I got this guy I know. He's a rapper. Want to bring him in?" I was like, "All right, let's do it." See some some of your, your music. Listen to your music, man. It's fire. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I like thank it. You. I've been doing it for a while now. It's been over 18 years, yeah. and um, I definitely feel like I've mastered the craft, definitely. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. So, y'all, it's the third day of summer. How's everybody feeling? Feeling good. I hope yeah. the sunniness lasts. Yeah. This is a gonna horrible last. year, man. It ain't going to last long. Weather-wise. <laughs> well, yeah, I, des- I definitely can agree with that. Um, <laughs> I definitely agree with that. I hope the summer lasts, and I hope, you know, people stay safe during the heat as well. Yes, yeah, sir. First day of summer, everything it's always Probably wild, right? Crazy yeah. in the city. Y'all, so what's some summer plans y'all got? I know it's, it's early, it's still, still the third day. Y'all got anything y'all trying to do? No. No? <laughs> no? I'm thinking about maybe renting renting like a cabin or something off Airbnb or AMB. Uh, what are they oh, called? Airbnb. 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 You messed Airbnb. the whole name up. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know what it is. <laughs> Well, I'm thinking about dropping my album in the next hey. few weeks. I would say the next week or so. I would have dropped it a couple of weeks ago, but yeah. I'm a perfectionist. I've been listening to it, okay. and I just want to get a couple of tinkers done before I actually put it out. So, what's what's gonna be the name of you? Can you can you say the name of the album? The name of the album is called The Key to Hustling. The Key to Hustling. Yes. Like and um, does anybody know The Key to Hustling? Shoot. <laughs> Ambition, awesome. motivation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, and being able to accept a no. A mm. lot of people, they don't know how to do that, and that's the key because, you know, you can get 100 no's before you get your first yes. That's true. You keep that kind of attitude up before you know it, you'll be a successful hustler. Yeah. A lot of people don't know how to do that, though. Yeah, no, man, the one thing I've heard right. is that you got you to gotta fail forward, right? We have all fail in our lives. We're going to face challenges, obstacles, but if you learn from that and grow from it, Nothing can stop you. Definitely. That's good. Definitely. Yeah. yeah, and if you learn from the failures and you learn from the no's, you can perfect your craft. Yep. You can perfect anything that you're trying to do. And that's the truth. So you will be ready for success. You'll be ready for the yes. Yeah. Because you get a yes too soon, you might not be ready for it. That's true. That's that's it's, definitely. I've seen a lot of people who got yeses real quick and they they messed them up. They weren't ready. That's like the uh, that's like. Um, when you get famous when at a real young age and yeah. then you grow up and you're all screwed up in the head because you don't even know what being, you know. All those child stars, man. Yeah, exactly. Look at Britney Spears and Lindsay Lohan and all of them. It's just, it's crazy. Yeah, the toll it takes. Britney, Britney brought it back around, though. Let's put respect know, on though. Britney's name. Let's, yeah. Britney brought it back around. We can talk about that later. <laughs> <laughs> but, but Caesar, so the way the format works, for those who don't know, so we have our three segments. So we do current events. Uh, we do Hip Hop Corner with Shayna and then Anthony's Two Cents. So let's let's start with current events. Um, y'all, there's some big news that's been going on this week in terms of the discussion around reparations. I'm sure y'all heard about it, right? Yes. And so the uh, the Senate had a um, a hearing where they brought in Tanahashi Coates, uh, Danny Glover was there. Who else was there? Coleman Hughes. Coleman Hughes was there. <laughs> so we had we had a bunch of people who were talking about sort of the need for reparations and kind of why they're they're advocating for it. Um, for those who don't know, obviously, you know, slavery was a, a huge economic boost for our country, and slavery used African slaves from the African continent, brought us over here, and pretty much created the country on the backs of our work, right? And there has been a lot of, and I think this happens like every 10 to 15 years, we had a discussion about reparations and whether we should bring it back, or at least provide reparations for Af- African descendants, Um and there's a lot of mixed reactions about that. Me personally, I'm for it, right? I don't know what y'all views are, um, but I think that this definitely needs to happen at some point. It won't happen during this administration. I pretty much guarantee that. But uh, whoever we bring in next, um, hopefully they lean towards that. So question for you all. Do we deserve reparations? Why? And how does it going, how's it going to work? I definitely think we deserve reparations. You know, I feel like we're like the Capricorns of <laughs> the zodiac signs of black people, if you will. You know, yeah. right after Christmas, they, oh, the money spent. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. can't give you a, we can't give you a, we can't give you a birthday. It's right after Christmas, man. You right. got to just get you know get with the program. You know what just happened. Yeah. But the thing about it is, you know, the Capricorns still deserve a birthday. You know, mm-hmm. so I do not think that I definitely think that we do deserve uh, reparations. I see a lot of. Uh, a lot of problems can be fixed just yeah. with that alone, you know. Yeah. Not only in my life, but I think we love spending it. I think it is. I think it actually stimulate the economy. You For know, sure. I don't think that maybe. 
I think that maybe also it's, there should be maybe some kind of like, you know, I don't want to just, you know, just create some kind of loop that they would just have people jumping through to be able to get what they deserve. Mm-hmm. But I do think in some situations, you know, a lot of money to some people could possibly cause problems. Right. Um, but when I really think about it, how much problem could they cause if every black person in the neighborhood has the same amount of money? <laughs> true, I yeah. mean, I can't sit up here and try to sit up here and sell, you know, crack to you as, a, uh, you know, somebody that's above you. Right. And you have just as much money as me. I mean, yeah. I don't know, though. I definitely yeah. could see it happening as a problem in some places, though. You know, mm-hmm. some people could probably overdose, you know. Right. I don't know if you ever saw that movie uh, where the guy was running with the time on him and he gave that one guy a lot of time. Uh, what was that? What was that movie? That, what was I'm it talking Justin about? Timberlake? Was it no. Justin Timberlake? In time, yeah. In yeah. time. Oh, yeah, it was yeah. in time. And he gave that guy all that time on his arm and he just, like, drunk himself to death yeah. instead of, um, you know, being productive with his family. Yeah. So I can see that happening in some situations, yeah. but... Should that be something that they even care about? No, because we don't care when people inherit money that they didn't earn and they blow True. it. True. But yeah, like just to piggyback off what uh, Caesar said, it would like we need immediate economic relief. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of the crimes that you know black people go to jail for are locked up for. They're poverty crimes. They're right. crimes that impoverished black people do. And when you look at the middle class, middle class black people. For the most part, they don't commit crime. Yeah. And the, t- the fact, too, that with reparations, it's not only providing you know, financial and economic incentive, but it's also acknowledging the atrocities of the past, right? It's just saying, like, hey, we're sorry for what we did as a government. We haven't even gotten that. Like, we talk about in our history, like, we know it happened, but I don't think the government has ever formally said, like, hey, you know, we apologize to black people in the United States for what we did as a country. I uh, I definitely agree with reparations, and I don't. I I like that the conversations, the conversation is at least happening. Yeah. Um. I am a little pessimistic, like towards you, like 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 towards what you're saying. Like I don't think it's going to happen in this administration. Mm. Um. But I never like the fact that a lot of politicians kind of skirt over the issue of reparations and never yeah. go towards it heads on because they don't want to step on you know other race and cultures' toes. Because but, they don't want to offend white people. Right. Right. But what I'm trying to say here is that uh, reparations are needed because even today we're still, you know, dealing with the repercussions and the lasting mm-hmm. damaging effects of racism earlier in this country and slavery. So, yeah, repar- yeah. Rep- reparations are needed. And think about it. They, the government has recently gave farmers, what, $16 billion? Yeah, they got reparations. Stimulus. Right. <laughs> right. They're giving wow. them a stimulus, $16 billion to go to that community. And it's, it's, there's not that many farmers in the United States, right? I think it's probably... I'm going to estimate, what, 3 or 4% of people in the United States are farmers. And a lot of them already get subsidies. Right. And so if we're that easy and that quick to throw out money for them, how about throwing $50 billion into the black communities, right, whether that's building, you know, um, schools um, you know, or renovating the schools or um, creating more community organizations? Like, those things are from reparations as well. But I think we kind of stuck upon just the money itself and just giving people a check. I think there's other ways. I think it needs to be a check, and then there also needs to be investments into um, institutions. Yes. As well. It it can be, and it should be both. So how do we account for who is a descendant of African slaves? Because that I, is kind of well, a— Well, my, uh, my father's mother, she did a baby book for him mm. with all the ancestors yeah. and, the, like, and their years of birth for both sides. So yeah. I can easily, account, at least through my father. Right. And there's DNA testing out there, so you'll know, like, specifically but what. those DNA tests, it, it's all based on the sample size because I can go get tested now, and they'll mm-hmm. say I'm 35% Nigerian, but mm-hmm. the more people that test, the lower my Nigerian uh, percentage goes. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. But and they use that for law enforcement. So they they do. Saying. I don't think they're gonna give it because they're scared. They don't yeah. they don't want see the they know they did such a they know they did something very you know, ferocious to our people. Yeah. And um, you know, it's like, you know, the old story in the Bible when they went and they took all the sons out of the house because, you know, they're trying to, you know, cover their tracks and they don't want anything to happen. See, the thing about it is they want us to be docile. Right. And you can't be docile with power and money is power. So right. The thing about it is, you know, as long as see a lot of people don't understand, slavery just ended. You know, that's why it's still that's why we're in this problem, you know, situation. Yeah. They try to make it seem like it ended, like you know, 
thousands of years ago, right, like the right. beginning of time or something. But no, slavery just ended 100 years after it ended. Martin Luther King was walking for education because there was clearly a problem in the yeah. black community. We were all not educated, and they wanted us to be able to find a way to be able to catch education easily. Mm -hmm. And what ended up happening was, you know, the government clearly saw it was a problem, but they wasn't going to let us be separate right. but equal because separate and equal – now you guys can have your own power, and now we could possibly have a problem with the power structure. Mm -hmm. So, okay, before we do that, we'll let you guys integrate with us. But see, within that integration now, did you know that the population of jail has went up? It used mm -hmm. to be 95% white people in jail. Now now mm -hmm. it's not that anymore. Now, mm -hmm. you know, for us to only make 12% up of the country, we wake up over like almost over 50% of the yeah. population in jail. And it's only because they're scared. So, you know, seriously... When you think about the, the true dynamics of what we're really facing, it's yeah. not about we did you guys wrong. It's about we don't want to have to pay for it. Yeah. We did you wrong, but we don't want to have to have any repercussions. That was our father's father's father's. No, it wasn't. It was your great granddad. It <laughs> just that, stopped. Not even that, because the residual effects of slavery leading into uh, the Jim Crow era was segregation, racism. That continues today. I was watching something on, it was this clip on, uh, not Instagram, but Twitter the other day. It was showing these black kids who were riding their bike in a, a white neighborhood in New York. This was like 1978, 1979. And the white kids mobbed up on the black kids and kind of drove them out. They're like, you don't belong here. Calling them N-words, throwing rocks at them. So that shows you, like, these are people's parents. Like, these, they were kids. They're people's parents right now. And that showed you that racism is embedded in the system of our culture, right? So it was, it's whether slavery ended back in the 1860s or whatever, it's still you're still dealing with the residual effects, and I think people are still. I would say some people aren't aware what we still deal with today. Even looking at the the um, injustices you see in um, the prison system that you just touched on, like that stuff is still happening today. You, police officers are over policing black communities, putting a high population of black people in jail, and that's a form of, of slavery to an extent. So, you know, something has to happen. We need to hopefully find an administration who's going to back this and, and maybe the, the dialogue and the ideology of the culture changes to where people are more on board with reparations. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't I don't know what I would do with it if they gave it to me, but I still want my 40 acres and a mule. <laughs> right, right, I don't I need don't, a mule. I don't, I don't know what I'd do with the mule, but I still want the acres, though. I got to be For honest. Real. But I, they, I don't think the hearing was a serious hearing. It wasn't. It wasn't. It was, I think it was basically a ploy because – whenever Democratic uh, presidential candidates have gone out, they mm -hmm. are being asked by people about reparations. Right. So I think that they're just having this hearing. So, okay, we talked about it. So, yeah. mm. you know, it is what it is. And the bill is just to study mm -hmm. reparations. And if you read that that bill mm -hmm. and compare it to other bills, that's not a real bill. It's three it's pages. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> It, it is it is a lot of lip service, and I think it's also going to be used as a tool for Republicans. And they're like, "Oh, look, this is what the the liberals want. They want reparations, knowing that their white base, who are mainly rural whites, um, they're going to feed into that and be like, oh, no, you know, we got to. There's no way we can have a, a Democrat in office. They're going to want reparations for black people, all of that stuff. So it's going to further divide the country. I feel um, because there are people in this country who are afraid to acknowledge what happened. And acknowledge that through financial means. Well, they can't acknowledge what happened. Laura Ingram was like, you lost. You got conquered. Yeah, it is what it is, crazy. basically. That's crazy. Um, so, I mean, that, it's, it's, a, it's a deep conversation um, that we, I'm sure we're going to have, have until, you know, the, over the next election. Um, you know, but we just got to think about the importance of it and read, being real about it. I read something online about uh, redlining and them oh, yeah. trying to, um, you know, I mean, even if they don't, hey, if you guys don't give me the 40 acres in the mill, what mm. about, like, you know, stop making it so hard to, you know, just live yeah. as a black person in mostly black areas? Like, mm -hmm. it makes no sense $500 a month for insurance, right. you know, on a car. You're going to surpass how much the car costs after three yeah. or four months just to be insured, and this is only because of redlining. Sure. Those kind of sure. situations, if they just address that and stop that, that would be a greatly appreciated outside of yeah. just, you know, uh, the reparations. Yeah, and a I lot, uh, when you talk about redlining, um, a lot of wealth was extracted from our mm -hmm. community because we weren't able to get those loans. 
um, a lot of black families entered into uh, what they call rent to own, mm -hmm. where you basically pay rent and keep up the house. You got to pay taxes and all that other stuff crazy. on the home. And if you fall behind on one payment, then it starts all over. It's crazy. Because I think I was just reading an article. They said in Chicago, it is distracting anywhere between 10 to 30 billion just Ooh. in Chicago. You know what they need to do, too, on top of that? They need to forgive all the student loan debt for African-American people, make college free. <laughs> like, that would be a great way. Like, clean up, wipe off all that debt. Because, you know, Af typically people who are living in lower-income societies or neighborhoods are more than likely going to incur more debt to go to school. I'd say if you wipe that out, kind of evens the playing field, allow people to at least get an equal footing, don't have to worry about paying back loans. Yeah, but help. not a lot of us go. Not a, yeah, not a lot do. I think it's maybe twenty something percent of us actually go, or make it free. Like look at a lot of Native, Native American yes. uh, tribes; they go to school for free. Isn't the country still in debt? We're to always going to be in, to China. <laughs> <laughs> like, to, but I mean, th when they want the money, they gonna find it from somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah they will. And they're it's. And then the government is not the only institution that was responsible for slavery sure. and the the economic terrorism that happened afterward the church mm -hmm. the banks yeah insurance companies prison prisons yeah yeah, yeah. so this this going to be a, a long discussion we're going to have but this is deep this is deep but i wanted to to bring this as a current event because it is you know hopefully um going to see we're going to see some change that happens from this but Shayna. So it was a good segment man right. hey it was a good yeah. segment it was a good one so Shayna. You don't have anything? For you? Oh, yeah. Old Town Road, Lil Nas X. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. I didn't listen. I heard he put Old Town Road on the uh, album twice. Oh, the remix why? and the original? Yeah. Dang. Man, right, so kids love that song. They do. But they I, do. I, I heard some kind of polarizing things. I heard that he got he dropped the EP. And he They say he trying to, he kind of sounds a little like Travis Scott. You know what I mean? Mm. It's like, it's not like, he's not like finding his individual voice on the EP. Yeah. That's kind of what I heard as reviews. Yeah. I got to add this. Who would have ever thought NBA players would have a rap beef? Y'all hear about this? Mm -mm. So da Damian Lillard from Portland, um, he was called out by Marvin, Marvin Bagley from the San, uh, Sacramento Kings. He called him out. He was like, hey, I can, I'm the best rapper in the NBA right now. And out of response, Damian Lillard dropped a, a diss track that same day. And then Marvin Bagley dropped a diss track that same day. And so this is like one of the first, and it, it's actually good too. You gotta listen yeah, to Damian, it. Well, they they got he, bars. He's decent. They got bars. I was surprised. Like they better than a lot of rappers. Way better than Old Town Road, <laughs> my man, um, Lil Nas. Um, but yeah, you gotta listen to it if you can. Yeah, um, we were just talking about getting a yes too soon. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> with, with my <laughs> oh yeah, Lil Nas X. Yeah. yeah, that that was an issue. But check it out, y'all. I think their stuff is posted on SoundCloud. If you got a Twitter, go to Damian Lillard's Twitter page. Go to Marvin Bagley's Twitter page. It'll be on there. I Give mean, it a listen. It's been a history of, you know, rappers trying to be, I mean, I mean, ball players trying to be Shaq. rappers. You know, Shaq. <laughs> you got Ron Artis, well, who is Metal World Peace now. Yeah. Uh, Kobe. You know, we, we've had a history of this. That's true, but they weren't good, though. Yeah, Shaq, Shaq, has, Shaq has some, yeah, you can't uh, stop the Shaq, has, I was about to, like, Shaq has some class. I think I know <laughs> about that one before, too. Yeah, that's I guess. Was, that's a classic with uh, with Biggie on it, the Biggie version. Oh. And yeah, we talked about this. Yes. Yeah, yeah, you, you put me yeah. on that. Oh, so Shaq, I didn't realize Shaq was, had bars like that. I know, I remember, was decent. I remember he was a rapping genie on Kazam, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but uh, yeah, definitely take a look at that. It was, take a listen because it's pretty good. Um, anything else you know, in the hip hop corner? Mm. No? Cardi B has oh. got oh, indicted. Oh yeah, yesterday. she got indicted. Yes, yeah, she sure yep. did. Indicted for what? Well, you supposedly she had a real. Uh, it was like some kind of um, fight she had, um, I believe, in New York with these strippers that was talking to um, her husband, talking to her husband, hey. two Come of them, on, Cardi, and she sent the blood gang, the gang gang, after him. So it's scared. like, yeah, she got like real charges, like conspiracy uh, to commit it's bodily harm, up. and yeah, yeah. yeah See, it, man. When you get to that point of fame, you just got to step Allegedly, away. Allegedly, because. The charges, the TMZ reported the exact charges, but the charges are supposed to be sealed until she's actually arraigned and she hasn't been arraigned yet. Mm. But it's crazy. She got too much to lose. Like, she got a kid. You know, she, I guess her marriage kind of restored. Who knows? But she got a lot to lose. And I feel bad for her because, like, that stuff, you got to let somebody else handle that. Like, no, you don't do that anymore. You're I mean, famous. I, agree. I mean, these women, they they allegedly, you know, were harassed by men. Wow. 
and they had to quit their jobs. <laughs> they couldn't crazy. earn a living. They, I think they were bartenders. I don't think they were strippers. Well, they were sh- bartenders at a strip club. Yeah. Which which means you one step away from being on the stage. <laughs> well, you know who going who going to hop in and take her sp- her spot? Megan Thee Stallion. Yeah, I, but I don't to, know. I think Megan in. like is her own. Like she's in her own lane. Like right. I don't think she's necessarily coming for like somebody. Else. I feel like there's a lane for all the women that mm-hmm. are in the game right now that are coming up in the game, and I think she's in her own lane. Like I don't think that's what he means though. Like I right. think he as means as far like, as pop- popularity, right? Popularity. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's room for all of them. Yeah, yeah it is. But I think Rhapsody should be higher than where she is. Like yeah. she's I agree. very underrated right now. Rhapsody is good. But you know, everybody want to see you know little little butt, little leg and thigh. That's what they yeah. interested in. What about Lauren Hill though? She she kind of rose to popularity without showing all that. It was a different she era though. Fell off very but, fast. <laughs> but that was the same era as Lil Kim and Foxy Brown. Yeah, they That's had true. their own. It was but enough room for all. Lauren of them. Hill only had one album though. She fell off very right. fast. She fell off very. And then yeah. her. And well, then I hear she so was, much about her performances. People don't like them. You know what I'm saying? Like they go to the performances and leave out with a bad taste in their mouth. Well, she usually late. Or she, she usually know, just don't show up. One time she was just there pregnant, just looked like she was about to give birth on stage. Oh, That's what I heard from the person who I know I actually have dang. purchased the tickets for them to go see it, and I got the review when they got back. To it's sad, though, because yeah. she she's so talented. Man. That's, she's probably the most talented female I want, R&B I want, singer. Right. I want to speak on one thing. Let's talk so, about DJ Kelly being a little salty. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. T- Tyler, the creator, beat him in top ten albums. Like, Tyler got number one, I think, with Igor. And DJ Khaled, I think because he yeah. put a lot of money into marketing, yeah. he got upset. Yeah, I heard that DJ Khaled, some of his record sales were tied to like a product or something that was being yeah. sold. And so they discount, they didn't count it. Uh-huh. Um, so technically he could have, should have been first. But, but but they do that all the time. Right. They factor in merchandising and, and bundles into album sales. Does it matter? Does it really matter though? Like you making money, you DJ I'm not Khaled. A fan. So. Like you DJ Khaled, you're going to make money regardless. It don't matter if you're first or second. I don't know how or why or what do you do. I think, I, I think <laughs> once upon a time he really was a DJ, a, like a real DJ, and then he just started getting artists together and having them make music and producers together. I think yeah. that's he's an arranger. He was a part yeah. of the Terror Squad before he got famous himself. He was out yeah. there back when Big Pun was doing his thing. He was the real skinny guy in the background <laughs> yeah. trying to be seen. You know? right, 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 he's the big right. guy in the, the foreground. <laughs> uh, but I think that the biggest thing with, uh, with this situation is I didn't really see the rant, but everything is about publicity. Everything right. is about, you know, a way to you know arouse the public to you know listen to your stuff more mm. so either one what he said was blowing up a portion like just imagine you're sitting in the back you're sitting in your living room as a billionaire May, mm. you have to remember he's a billionaire. he just became a billionaire so you're sitting as a billionaire. He did? yeah he's he had, a billionaire i didn't know I that. Thought jay-z was the billionaire no but see he's uh, not a rapper see yeah. dj well, Khaled's is not a rapper but he did become oh, a billionaire yeah. though oh. check it out yeah. So after he became, a, so him being a billionaire sitting in his living room, and then you hear this Tyler Creator comes out, and mm. he's supposed to be the top artist. You could just possibly be joking, like you know, I've never heard of this guy. Where is right. he even at? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That someone's yeah. next to you. He called what he no. called it mysterious shit. Like <laughs> <laughs> nobody heard D- DJ Khaled stormed his but then, office though. Didn't you're he? absolutely right because stormed his, his album went oh, number own, one okay. the next week, so it could have been publicity. That's true. Yeah, it's, it's different ways to skin a cat when you're trying to get some uh, some people to buy your, your record. So yeah, I, but what in your mind tells you that that would work? It didn't work for Nicki Minaj when she complained about Travis beating her. It, yeah, it, that, that doesn't work though. Sometimes it does though. I mean, can't yeah, put it past. I guess. But yeah, so I guess that's the end of uh, Shayna's segment. See, we had some stuff, Shayna. Right, we had yeah. a little bit. Let's move on, Anthony. What's going on? Um, I want us to get into the conversation, so I'm gonna keep it quick. But I saw two very different movies about toys yesterday. <laughs> okay. I saw Toy Story 4 with my girl. Um, did you see it, Shayna? No, I haven't seen it yet. Okay. It's, it's a pretty solid movie. You know, um, they, um, I thought the series was Is it was better all... than three? So, yeah. yes. I mean, no, it's, it's just as good. But here's the thing. Like, three was a great conclusion to the story, and this movie is like a further conclusion. Because when you see it, it makes sense. Like, the yeah. theme of it with this movie, it deals with, like, lost toys. You know, and, mm-hmm. and what is and what is found can never be lost. That's kind of like the theme of the movie, and it it resonates. It's a classic Pixar film. It tugs at the heartstrings. But when it was all over, I said, "All right, that was good, but was that needed?" Right. And you can tell this is the real finale because of how it ends. But it's like, eh, was that really needed? I mm-hmm. mean, but overall, it's good. You know, they got Keanu Reeves. <laughs> 
it, God, the, the internet is loving him right now. I don't. Yeah, he, yeah it's, it's Keanu. They got Key and Peele in it. Um, they yeah. they're 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 a highlight in it. But um, mm. Toy Story Four is pretty solid. Okay, give it a thumbs up. But my thing is like, do we continue to need? Like more uh, sequels of Toy Story. Like, what's the point? I feel like, like more other than, sequels. Other than making money, like, what's the point? Period. Like three, three was a perfect cap off. Yeah, it was. This movie, it can be in there, but it's like, eh, was it needed? They just wanted to make more. They want to stay relevant. <laughs> but if the sequel is good, I don't complain. Like, like this is kind of like the same. This is every Fast and Furious movie after the first one. <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah, why? All right, all right, but was that needed? You know what I mean? Probably but not. you know what I mean? I do want to see Hobbs and Shaw. Yeah, that looks oh, good. That yeah, looks like yeah, a good yeah. uh, action comedy. Yeah, it should be a good one. So but I, I agree with what you're saying. Yeah. So what's the other toy movie? Oh, Child's, Child's Play. Play. Child's yeah. Play. This was an interesting movie, man. I feel like they, they rebooted Chucky well because, mm. like, the way they did it. Mark Hamill did a great job as the voice of Chucky. So, like, you know what the original Chucky is the solo. Is that Luke, Luke Skywalker? Yeah, because oh. he voices the Joker in the Batman cartoons. Oh, yeah, he does. <laughs> so, like, um, in the original Chucky, you know he got the soul of a serial killer in him. Mm. With this one, it's like a computer malfunction. Mm. So this one works a little differently. Um, okay. I don't know. It's a bit more gory than the mm -hmm. originals, though. Like, it's a little it's a little bit more sick. Yeah. Where, whereas in the first Child's Play, Chucky was trying to take Andy's soul. In this mm. one, Chucky, is, Chucky thinks his job is to protect Andy from everybody. Mm. You know, he's, oh, over, oh. he's overprotective and, like, he's psychotic, uh, psychotic robot. But um, <laughs> it's good, man. I like the way it kind of, like, uh, criticizes, like, the series and the Alexas yeah. and uh, the self-driving cars because Chucky is a part of a corporation that does all that. So, okay. um, yeah. Well, his name is Buddy in the movie, but they, they call him Chucky as a nickname. So, uh, mm. yeah, it was, it was pretty solid. Oh, it was a solid cool. reboot. Did he want to see Shaft? No. I didn't see that. I saw Saf. I, I saw Saf too. I, How was it? I, you know, I, I enjoy it. It's like it's nice seeing Sam Jackson come back. Um, you know, I, it was more on the comedic side. It was, wasn't yeah, it? it was a comedic side. Yeah. Um, Wait, the first Shaft is not a comedy. First Shaft. Which one? Well, we the one about? like the, yes. You're the one from the seventies. Oh, the I, don't, I don't remember. That's a comedy. From, I'm sure it was. I, I mean, didn't see the one from. 70s. He's a bad mother. Shut <laughs> your mouth. I thought <laughs> you that know? was. I thought I'm, that was a I'm serious black exploitation movie. Is there such thing? Yeah, I mean, it was right on time for Father's Day too. The movie, yeah. like oh, yeah. you know, it was like a big father. Yeah, it had the three generations it, you know? of Shaft. Yeah, yes. it was a good one. I enjoyed. It. I mean, you got to take it for what it is. It's not a serious movie, right? But it was it was I enjoyable. I wouldn't call Shaft comedy though. Not the yeah. one from the. 70s. Was it like Superfly? Did you uh, see? Oh, Superfly? I didn't see Superfly. No. Oh, no, I didn't see that one. But it was good. I mean, I, I recommend going. Superfly. Yeah, another good uh, show I saw. This is on Netflix. The Black Godfather. You want to see it? I, it's on my list. I, it's really I good. saw it. I have my thoughts about that. I mean, so for those who don't know, um, it was a guy who, his name is Clarence Avant. So Clarence Avant, he's not a, it's kind of hard to define what he is. He's a black gatekeeper. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> to all the stars, all, all the musicians, you know, um, he, he rose up like in the 1930s, 1940s, I believe. You know, he was looked at as being like the person who would connect with the black artists. And so from there, he used that opportunity to really sort of make his own fit within the industry. So it's kind of weird, like, where, what he is. No one can define him. He's just, he's, he's, he's just Clarence Avant. He's the man. Right, he's just the man. Mm -hmm. um, so it was a really good show. What were your thoughts? You sound like you didn't I really. Don't, I don't like the idea of gatekeepers because if he don't like you, he don't like your attitude. If he don't like your music, then... Yeah you're cut off because he has this big network yeah. of people that he has put on uh -huh. and he can be like, well, I don't want you working with them. Mm. Or, I, oh, I heard, like, or he could even, because they made it seem like if he was even iffy about something, yeah, he wouldn't, like, white money wouldn't back it. Mm. So, yeah, I have my issue with all, all kinds of, like, gatekeepers. I agree. Was it objective reasoning why he didn't like certain people? Or was it like subjective like, eh, I'm not With feeling human it. beings, it's all yeah, subjective. Yeah, it's subjective, yeah. Because there was instances where he was just, you know, he did, wasn't feeling them. Like somebody, it, it was one situation where the guy called him, uh, they was like, hey, I want to get you involved in the civil rights movement. He's like, no, I don't care about no civil rights. Yeah. I'm like, dog, you can't, so this, can't this is, say that. So this is a movie about a controversial figure. It, I don't. Th well, I mean, I wouldn't say he was controversial. Yeah. He was just a, a figure in the, the entertainment industry. He was, just, he was just this person who, like she says, the gatekeeper who everyone knows. Like he's he's in all like circles. If you want, like to get put on, or if you want something done, 
you you could go through him. Okay. And the there people, are a lot of people there like Diddy. Yeah, Barack. Barack. For real. So that shows you he's he's connected, man. Okay. But I I recommend taking a look at it. Yeah, um, I definitely re- recommend it's watching it. It's kind of long, though. It wasn't long to me. It wasn't long? I mean, there's was a lot of good information in there. Yeah. But, yeah, I just don't like the whole idea of gatekeepers. Yeah. I guess that's it for me. Anything else, Anthony? Uh, Before we move on, and no, not right now. I mean, I got some stuff to say about gatekeepers, but it's not coming to my mind right now. Uh, Ray Shaw, you seen anything? Uh, yes, I've seen a few movies. Um, what's one of the one of the newest ones I saw that I like? I saw Toy Story as well. You know, what'd you feel? You feel it was needed? Well, I I see what they were trying to go with, and I almost feel like they were trying to relate it to, like, almost, like, black people in a way. You know how all the stories have, like, an underlining, (laughs) you know, like, be free. Don't don't think you have to have a master. It's better to be free and just enjoy who you is, you know. If you're watching it the whole time, they're trying to impress, you know, they're trying to get the Andy, and they don't even realize, you know, you're free now, and there's a big world out there, and plenty mm. of things that want you. See, you know? I'm not the only one that's too woke to enjoy stuff. <laughs> but, well, he know. enjoyed it though. Yeah, I took my oh, son. Oh yeah, I don't those, be. You know, I don't so be I was enjoying all deep it. Thinking while I was in it. Stuff, you yeah, know? you're right. I don't be enjoying it. Right. <laughs> but um, it was there's a movie that I want to watch though, but I haven't seen it. It's supposed to be like the bad Superman or something like that. Oh, right, right, I'm trying one. to. I think it's playing, but it's only playing in like one theater. I think in. Um, because I was trying to find that in John Wick. But I it's like it, only playing like one theater around here. Right. I thought it was everywhere, but I guess they probably limited it after a while. Yeah. It was good, I, though. Yeah, I got to take a look at that. It's it solid. Was, so is it like a scary movie or is it like really like a bad Superman? It, it's it's kind of horror because like it, it really is the birth of evil. So, yeah, it's the bad Superman. But he's right, not, so he's not Superman. He's like Superman. Yeah, it's horror. But it's not like jump scares or nothing. Well, it's a few jump scares, but it's, it's solid. Yeah, yeah I got to take a look. I was trying to get my mother and my girlfriend to go with me, but, you know. They don't they like were, those scary I was movies. trying to, like, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not the kind of person that want to see some kind of yeah. really scary jump out of my stuff either. But yeah, I, I was thinking, come on, it's a little kid. He's supposed <laughs> to be the good Superman. What could he do? Now, you know? Little kids are the worst, though. Yeah, I, you know, I saw so a little evil. something. He was going in and out of something. He was, like, <laughs> messing the house up. I'm like, oh, he's not doing nothing too bad. He's uh, just messing the house up. He ain't uh, playing, man. He ain't playing. Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> but let's get into our, our, uh, our last segment. So, we want to just sort of get to know you, you know, tell us about yourself. So, so Caesar Ray, um, you're a rapper from Detroit. How did you get your start? I got my start. Actually, I was, um, I've always been into music. My grandfather was a musician and, um, he played with, uh, Louis Armstrong and things wow. of that nature. So, you know, I used to be in his front living room and he would play with his, uh, you know, all of his instruments for us. And we were just little kids. So wow. we're sitting up there and it's a big trombone playing. We're like, you know, at least I was, I'm like, whoa, you know, yeah. I want to, I'm going to play an instrument one day. You know, then sometimes he let me pick up his instrument and I'm like, you know, oh yeah, I got the instrument now. So then yeah. eventually, quite naturally, I went into being, I played the saxophone, the violin, I played clarinet, you know, nice. so many. I was in an orchestra for about four years. So that was the beginning. But I would say when I started rapping, it just started coming to me. Like, yeah. you know, I was cleaning up one day and then, you know, came up with the line. I'm like, oh, that's kind of sweet right there, you know. <laughs> and then I came up with another line and added it. Before I got done, I cleaned the whole house and I had a whole rhyme. Yeah. And I just never forgot it, never wrote it down, though. But I never forgot it, though. And then from there, I just started adding to it and then... I just was like, man, you sound sweet, you know? <laughs> and um, then I started needing beats, and then that's mm. when I started really realizing it was more of a, uh, it, it was it, it takes more to make a song than just being, you know, sweet at rapping. Right. But, you know, I found myself in different studios and people, you know, mm. I would say using my talent but not giving me a chance to, you know, preview it myself. Like, you mm. know, I don't know if you've ever been to a studio before. Have anybody been to a studio before and did any music? Just once. Have like, you ever went somewhere, did some music, and not been able to get the song when you got done? I, I mean, I've been well, to the studio because they have to mix and master right. it and all that stuff. So I never seen the final like cut. Yeah, music. see, I went there, never got the song, performed it a few times yeah. with the with the camp or whatever, and never got the song. So I'm just like in the background looking at the uh, you know <laughs> what's going on. I'm looking at the computer like I'm gonna find out what they're using. I'm gonna do this myself. I don't yeah. need them, you know. Yeah. Found out they had Fruity Loops, and yeah. um, you know I went and found a way to get Fruity Loops for free, and yeah. I started allegedly. Trying to, yeah, right, right. right. <laughs> you say allegedly, 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 yeah, funny. allegedly, yeah. kind of for free, but not really. <laughs> and um, we, um, I got a chance to make beats, and I was learning, and um, I started getting 
a couple like a customer here and there you know yeah. they might want a beat and um then eventually i just started realizing you need to record over the beats you can yeah. be a sweet rapper and have beats but you have to record over them right. brought my first you know recording software which was cakewalk it wasn't pro tools wow. and um i started recording and then instantly boom customers mm. well no first it was fake friends <laughs> first it was fake friends first you know a lot of fake friends came to the studio they were wow. there and then the studio broke down yeah. and then i had no studio for like five months and all the friends i had disappeared oh so they wanted they wanted to record their stuff right it, yeah. hello who is it oh it, it, yeah oh you trying to get to the studio oh it's down y'all can still come through oh i right. just oh well yeah i'll let y'all know when they get back up and running you know mm. boom as soon as they get back up and running you know what i'm doing wow. it costs to get in the studio now guys if you want to come i'm going to charge you and that's when it all started wow it's been that way ever since i love people though i love the you know yeah. the fringe well whatever it is that you get when you get the people that the bonds you create right but you know i also know that at the end of the day when the studio breaks down mm. they're gonna go so yeah. that's why it's a business so, so it sounds like sometimes rap, rapping, the rapping career, is kind of a lonely journey. Like, do you feel like? Not when you're good. No, it's not a lonely <laughs> journey. It's actually, I don't know. I prefer to kind of, I love being around like-minded individuals, yeah. but I feel like I make the best music when I'm alone. Okay. You know, like when I'm alone and I can actually like vibe out and even maybe mm. even experiment when I don't have to feel like someone's judging what I'm yeah. saying. You know, you might be in there and hit a note that you would have never done before, but if right. someone's in there, you're not even thinking about hitting any notes. Yeah. But if no one's in there, you just, what if I make it hit a high note or put some auto-tune? I wonder how it's going to sound. Even sure. if you sound stupid outside of the headphones, you're hearing it in the microphone, mm. and you don't have any judgment, so it allows mm. you to have a little bit more free space. But other than that, though, you know, I feel like the music industry is not lonely. Yeah. I feel like it's mostly deciphering who's really real who real who and who's right? not that's what mm. i think it really is because you know before you know it people like i say you know once this once the music stops your real friends are still there the ones that's yeah. not they're gone yeah so um you know when you were getting, getting started in your career and getting started rapping who did you look to to inspire you like what artists kind of inspired you tupac biggie yeah. nas uh yeah. the greats in my opinion yeah. you know uh, i love i love lyrics i love Eminem, I love to yeah. be able to rewind to be able to, you know, what did that guy just say, you know? Is he, yeah. he's, he rhymed that so many times. Let me listen to it again. So I would say those guys, pretty, I mean, don't get me wrong, like mystical too. I was right. really a real big hip-hop head. But when it came to Tupac, though, I remember watching him and thinking like, wow, like, mm. I don't know if you guys remember when MTV shut down everything and it'd be world premiere, premiere. Yeah, you're like, yeah. oh, what's about the Tupac coming on at 4 o'clock? I got to make sure I'm at the house to watch it. It was almost like they treated Tupac like a TV show when he came yeah. out with a video back in those days. It wouldn't even be any other videos that played after it. It would be like, mm. everybody, this is the world premiere of Tupac's video. Yeah. So, I mean, that just had me just kind of like captivated. Like, I mm. want to do that, yeah. you know. I like that. Do you ever like fear where rap is going? Cause I feel like I was looking at something the other day. Um, people don't appreciate real rap anymore, right? I think it's kind of this this gimmicky stuff. It was even during the NBA draft. There was like, they were asking these young kids. They're all like 19, 20, 21, 22 years old. They was like, who was Outkast? And they didn't know. Did y'all see that? Man. They know they didn't know who Outkast was. I mean, but that's give a pass for that. <sighs> a lot of people weren't alive when Tupac was alive. So yeah. I'm not, I'm not really expecting it to be the way it used to be because yeah. they're like they're looking at old school now like games first album. And then yeah, that's you know, true. like that's Outkast true. is not like Stevie Wonder, where you're, right. you're as a mom I can listen to Stevie Wonder or even Will Smith because my baby love Will Smith. I can listen mm. to that yeah. around her and not have to worry about the explicit lyrics and mm. having to debrief her <laughs> from yeah. that. What about Miss Jackson? I feel like that's a crossover. The way you I guess move. You're right. Like yeah, that was definitely a crossover, yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah but I can't I and can roses. listen to songs in well, the key of life to. or Big Willie style and just let it ride out when I'm with my daughter. I can't listen to um Stank On Here. That's true. As much as I love that album, I can't listen to it like when she's around. So yeah. I wouldn't expect like younger kids like that because like I have a connection to like Stevie Wonder right. and the temptations and stuff like that because that was constantly played while I was young. Yeah, I guess. I'm just, I'm coming from it like you should know 
there's some things you should know. If you're a right. fan of the genre, you should know. If, yes. you're, if you're like a passerby or you hear it on the radio and you listen to hip hop, yeah. you, you don't need to know unless you're okay. a fan of that genre. Okay. So I guess for you, um, you know, how do you stay? Because again, hip hop rap is changing. You know, it's falling to like a little more gimmicky type stuff. How do you stay true to to who you are? I try to make sure I'm telling the truth, mm. and I also try to, I, I, tr- I, you know, I think about, I think about, you know, what a person would want to know about that can't be where I'm at. Mm. Like I know a lot of people that would love to come to Detroit, mm. be right in the belly. Right. But they wouldn't even know how to survive or even know what to be thinking like if they yeah. were there, you know. Yeah. I'm not saying that there's a certain way to think. Everyone has different ways of survival wherever they're at. Right. But, see, I just like to talk about making money and hustling and right. how I do, do it with that kind of way, you know. When I say hustling, I don't mean, like, hustling drugs, hustling anything you can hustle. You can hustle right. a job. Please believe it. It's about trying to have a way to survive. Mm. Things you do every day to make, you know, to make things meet. So I feel like... When I listen to it, I just want to be able to feel like I'm talking to myself mm. as I'm going through things. Because right now the music is real because I'm going through it. Yeah. So it's not like if Jay-Z, if you notice, his music doesn't sound like I at first did when he first came out. Because when he first came out, he had a different hunger. Mm-hmm. You know, it was different. You know, it was it was because, you know, I'm still out here in the streets and I'm making moves. And I, mm-hmm. I know a little something that can touch your brain that you know about. But yeah. once he got famous, it seems like his music got out of touch with people because now yeah. I'm driving Bentley's on this level and I'm here. on some right. other stuff that I'm saying. Now, other people relating to me, but y'all not so much relating to me. So I feel like what keeps me relevant is being mm-hmm. able to listen to it and relate to myself because it's constantly yeah. every time i listen to my music it's almost like it brings it almost like it's talking to me about a moment that may even be happening at that exact moment you mm-hmm. know whether if it's like i got a song called you know um do you guys curse on i got a song called fuck fake friends you know mm-hmm. and um the song is about you know people that come and go and they try mm-hmm. to play you close and act like they know you but they really don't know you like that but right. they they think they know you, you know, but it's basically telling you, like, skip them. They don't care about them, you know. Yeah, skip fake real. friends. Yeah, I like the beat on that. I might fuck really? around and get a speeding ticket to that song. <laughs> oh, oh, so thank you. Oh, you heard it. Yeah, That's oh, yeah. What's what's up, yeah I, I sent yeah, those to you. Yeah, he That's what's it. up. That's what's up. So when I listen to that song, so many times I've heard that song and I related to an exact moment where I was yeah. like, you got to remember, people be fake, man. You can't be sitting up here thinking that people don't come and go. So when I listen yeah. to that song, it'll put me right in the exact frame of mind. Yeah. And unfortunately, a lot of times, if I'm going to be thinking that way, it's going to be with the customer because I really don't hang out with too many people other than clients. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, sometimes lines get crossed and people fall out, you sure. know. Now, with your, like, w- with your music, um, like, are you a perfectionist? Yes, I am. And that's the reason why it's taking, t- it's, that's why it's going to take a couple more weeks to put this album, this key to hustling out. But I'm going to put all of them out. I'm going to put all of the albums out on iTunes at once so you guys can be able to listen to it, you know, and stream it as you guys go. But uh, I am a perfectionist because I feel like if you're going to be in competition, Mm -hmm. you know, you're going to be in competition with people that have such a team, you know. You have to try to represent yourself on a multi level as a team, just right. in one person. So I try to be my own listening party. I try to be my own judge. Like you know, that's uh, it. Has to it has to go. This it just doesn't sound like what someone's gonna. It's not gonna be something everyone listens to. Right. It has to, it can't be on the on the. That has to be a mixtape song. Throw it out there. Just give it to them. Right. It's not gonna be something taken serious. But the thing about it is, some people if they just listen, if they're not thinking like a board of people with a harsh critic, right? Because you really have to think outside of just yourself. Sure. Then you're just um, gonna say everything's sweet. Put it out. We're gonna <laughs> right. blow up. Right. You know. And then now you're sounding like true. a. Um, like you're not professional in some areas. That's the truth. Yeah. But as a perfectionist, like, do you ever take the time to listen to your old music and appreciate your growth? Definitely, definitely. Um, and that's the reason why I'm going to release all of, all of the old albums as well because um, I just feel like I want to re-release it. It's mm-hmm. gotten very easy to release albums on iTunes recently, guys. Yes. And um, it used to be in the past, people, you know, they would be trying to figure out a way to get it out there. Mm-hmm. And what I did, I used to just hustle it off the hip, and I found a way to do it, and I taught other people how to do it. So I, like, sold over 4,000 copies of some of my old co- wow. some of my old albums. And um, 
want to re-release it because I'm listening to them and I'm like, man, this is hot. But I remember what made me stop selling the last album. It wasn't any songs tour, you know, for women. Mm. And I'm a harsh critic. And mm. when I listen to the old albums, like when I was listening to Mace or DMX, I would always mm. just skip through to see if I could find something to bang with a chick. Yeah. And I did that with my album one day, trying to sell it to some females. They still bought it because I got a mouthpiece, you know. But <laughs> I just didn't like that the only song toward women was disrespect to them. And I started realizing, like, that's something that's very popular in the rap community. And I instantly, I instantly stopped selling it and started working on something new mm -hmm. and started making songs for the women because I felt like, you know, that's the way I want to represent myself. I love women. I don't yeah. want to come out like a woman hater, you know. So, I, you know, I, I brought it back, and now I feel like, Definitely. When I listen back to it, I hear the hunger. I love where I was going with it. But now mm -hmm. as an older, you know, maybe a couple years later and been out there talking and trying to network with people because you got to do that to know where your album's going to land as far mm -hmm. as your demographics. Real. You know, women are the biggest buyers. Got to give them praise. You got to show them love. It's not even about just showing them love to get them to buy. It's about, you know thinking about what kind of people you want to listen to your stuff. You want women haters listening to it only. Right. Like, you know, I love women. I'm not right. a woman hater. Well, yeah, I feel you. I feel you. So I think that is one of the key elements I focused on this one. You guys will be able to hear it all, though. Yeah, I'm excited to hear it, man. You got, once you yeah. release it, you got to let us know so we can plug it on air. Right, definitely. So you know, for sure. So you I know. spoke. I'm sorry. He said something early, and I'm, and I'm just thinking off the head right now. He said something about what I'm doing recently. I'm working on a movie. It's called Bridge Card. Okay. It's about to be <laughs> epic. I have a lot of big stars in there. Yeah. I'm going to give you guys an idea about it because, we're, I mean, like, we're going to go back into shooting it at the beginning of the month. Mm -hmm. And uh, we already have uh, we have uh, Eastside Ivo. He's going to be a part of it. Okay. We have, I don't know if you guys know who Jackpot the Juice is. Yeah. Okay, Jackpot the Juice <laughs> like is going to be the main a, star. A comedian. Yep. Popular on Instagram. Okay, so basically, <laughs> I would go more into it, but my marketer has told me to... Yeah, I have back. to get some. Yeah, I got to get some things taken care of before I put it all the way out yeah, there. But I'm excited I about really that. I really enjoy like um, the low budget. Like I'm not sure what your budget is, but I really enjoy like oh, yeah. the, the the low budget Detroit movies that I've seen on Amazon. Yeah. Like they are really good. They're well acted out. Yeah, right. Like they have really good <coughs> scripts. It's just that I guess um, I guess maybe w the budget, but I don't think like the budget not being there is like makes the film like bad yeah like they're right. really it's, good movies I like agree. i love plug love and I, think, <laughs> and I think it's about your ability to relate to it like yes. you can relate to that movie and you're like oh that's that's i experienced that before i want you to ask, feel, yeah go ahead no no i agree with y'all i just say yeah. i want to ask this before we run out of time because you know you are an artist but you're also a videographer yes. me and you spoke about your uh well i guess you're still doing it now where you um you you did interviews and you you, you um you walk around with the camera too yes yes so, so tell me about that well, um, it's all a hustle. I didn't, even, I didn't even do this. I want to go ahead and I'm going to stop it because I haven't even started press records. <laughs> so I want to put it down so I can save my battery. But it's basically, it's Stump the Radio. Stump the Radio, it came from God. I, uh, I give it to God. I remember praying for an idea because before I was selling my CD off, off the hip or whatever, back in the day, I used to sell DVDs. And I was a real big DVD salesman. I'm not necessarily proud of it, but I did learn some things from it, and um, I wanted to stop doing it because I was, that's what I was known for, even though I had so much other talent, you know, I could try, you could try your hardest to be known, hey, I got to see these DVDs for sale, and I got got a good, I rap too, yeah, yeah, give me what you got, I don't care about your rapping, you know, yeah. they really don't, you know, like, hey, man, you I got a, um, DVDs with original content, you guys, yeah, not, yeah. not copyrighted material. Yeah. Right, so <laughs> I ended up, you know, turned around, and um, I asked, you know, God for a way out, and he showed me a way out with the, with the camera, and I didn't have the camera at the time, I just was like, you know, asking, how could I do this, you know, and he was like, well, why don't you, um, you know, put your music on a video and sell your music on a DVD? And I was thinking to myself, no one's going to buy that, you know? Mm -hmm. And I was like really thinking, like, what can I do? What if you put other people's music on a DVD and you put commercials on there? Right. What if you can throw it? What if you can give it out for free and you put everybody else's stuff on there and you put commercials on there and it's paid for and you make it to the DVD? I just sent up there all these different ways and... I, when I first got my, when I got finally got my first chunk of money, I, you know, I had to either, I was gonna either get a, ch uh, a charger. It was brand new at the time. It was supposed to be going against the Challenger. So some, some, it, the Charger just came out, or I was gonna get a camera, mm -hmm. the one that you see. And I decided to get the camera instead. And then I called mm -hmm. my buddy Deep Water, and I, um, it was like the same night when I got it. I'm like, hey man, got this idea. 
I just want to go out here to some open mics and just catch some rappers. Were you down mm-hmm. what he said? Come on, let's do it. So the same day I got it, I was out there recording people, and I noticed how hard it was for us to get into this local, not even prestigious place. Yeah. I made us, so the next time, even though we got through there, we met some people too, but the next time I had us wear shirts that said Stump the Radio, and I had us wear lanyards, and then doors started to open up. Then we interviewed Too Short, and then that Too Short was a blessing because then we ended up being E-40 and mm. so many people we've been in contact with because of this. But the reason I say it's a hustle is because when we show up, it's not like MTV. Like MTV, you probably, if before they show up to an event, everyone probably knows about it. Right. They're like, oh, MTV come tonight. I got to make sure I'm straight. But when we show up, it's like I'm still regular to the people that are guards sometimes. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So, like, mm-hmm. just to give you an idea what I mean by it's a hustle. So we interviewed Too Short. It was so sweet. He was like, come on, come. We're gonna, I'm going to take you to my next part. We're about to go and perform at um, down in, um, well, I think it was Flint. So he had us hop on the bus with him. We went to Flint. Then we ended up catching Doughboy, uh, one of them guys that um, – Heartbreak Kid. We ended up mm. catching him oh, down there and KD easy. Right. Mm. So we like, dang, you know, blessing after blessing. Then we come back to the city, you know, and as we leave and we his manager talking to us, he's like, Yeah, we're gonna be back on the 29th. We're gonna see y'all there. We're gonna wow. be at the uh at the Fox. We like uh, no, the Fillmore. We like bet. We're gonna be there too. Okay, we see you there. So now here comes the day on the twenty ninth at the Fillmore. We show up. We ready. Right. We got fresh T shirts on, everything. Uh, but they looking at us like, come on, buddy. Man. We know you know Two Shorts. He's pointing at the sign above us like, we know you know Two Shorts coming. We know you know Juvenile's coming. We're not letting you in here unless Two Short himself wow. comes and lets you in. So you can just imagine the kind of doubt that could probably bring to most people. But we stayed there persistent. You know, we showing the interview, like, look at the interview. This is Too Short himself saying that. Come here, you know. Right, right, They're right. like, you know, whatever, Too Short, pull up in the car. He show up late. <laughs> you know, he pulls up. And he ain't driving. He in the back. It's like three other chicks hop out with him and two dudes in the front, you know. He hop out with a big bottle of Patron. He look at us. He like, uh, oh, they with me. <laughs> so me and my camera crew got in and we took like four other people that was there with us you know messing with the security guards like we all walked in the back <laughs> with look, looked short. at them stared at them like uh. yeah we looked at them like yeah y'all have a good night you know boom <laughs> went up in there and i mean it was just a great night but that kind of hustle happens every time and i really yeah. just think that it's important to stick to your dream get out there don't think that you need to get some kind of even though it's, it pays to have your paperwork right, right, don't let that stop you even. If you got an idea and you feel like it's something platinum, mm. do it. Like, like, just do it. Get out there, grab the camera, run up to the people, mm. be professional about it, and think outside of what you have. Think about yeah. if you were hired at the kind of company that if you wanted. Like, the way you got things set up in this place, right. very professional. Right. I like it. Appreciate it's going exactly which way it's supposed to go. And, you right. know, before you know it, you just had to do it, right? Right, yeah. It's, you yeah. just had to do it. You can't let nothing stop you. You just got to do it. Put yourself in a position to receive, and that's the only way you're going to receive. Mm. I like that because a lot of people are afraid to take the chance on themselves, right? So just being able to, to take that, that leap of faith, like, hey, I'm doing it. You know, something you got to do. And then I like that you put you said be professional yeah. because a lot of people, they're walking around with cameras, even with cameras on their phone. They're very rude, yeah. like, to you know, to people – and they're very rude to celebrities. And shout out to Ice Cube. He was a very down earth guy. When I got a chance to interview him, you know, he did the most noble, noblest thing that I that I'm not gonna say that I've ever seen, cause like I said, I've dealt with many of celebrities. But you know, when you get when you get to that kind of status of being that famous, you're being crowded by the public. Yeah. They're on you. They're like, let me get a picture. Let me get a picture. Let me get an autograph. Let me get an autograph. Hey, I got a rap. I got a rap. Hey, let me do this. Let me get an interview. Yeah. That man right there. I didn't see him turn down no pictures for nobody. Wow. He he was there. He was very comfortable. And at the very end, when it was when we was when we was trying, because we set up a room for an interview, and then someone else. This weekend it just passed mm-hmm. a couple of days ago. We set up this interview, and then someone else there with the camera tried mm-hmm. to steal the interview. Mm-hmm. I mean, the girl was so good with the way she moved in there. She slid like, in there. She way. slid in there with her camera and she had a nice microphone. She started talking to him. She mm-hmm. moved our camera out the way. I'm like, hold on, that's our camera. Yeah. She like, it'll be back in a minute. I mean, the girl was very oh, wow. crafty with it, but I understand this is your shot. Right. This your shot. I kept my camera. I, I'm just going to record her until my host get in the place, you know. Yeah. 
uh, Ice Cube, you know, he didn't understand that, that he was doing it for the wrong person at the moment. But mm. once he got a chance to see the footage that we had and the stuff that we've already done and accomplished, it goes to show you how a portfolio goes so far. Yeah. You know, we got the interview. We got him to talk about when the next Friday's coming out. No one knows when that's going to come out. It's going to be available later on today on my channel, wow. KO King ENT on YouTube, all one word. You can check that out. And I do appreciate all of you guys for having me here today. Truly, truly do appreciate Thank it. Thank you for coming. Appreciate it. Yeah, but man, I, I'm just, um, it's amazing to see sort of, you know, how you got this, just being with your family, being with your, you seeing your uh, grandfather, you know, playing his music, and then from there, inspiring you to, to you know, to, to start your, so that's awesome. Um, I'll go again. You want to go again? <laughs> 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 All right, we're just waiting for our sound engineer to wrap up, but um, I do want to say some last words, because we like to follow with last words um, on just today. Yeah, first off, give your plug. Let us let the world know. Okay, if you guys are looking for me, you can look me up on Instagram, C Z A R R A E. If you look me up, I am always re well. I, I'm always recording people in the studio, but when I'm doing it, I'm, I pull that camera out because I feel like it's a platform, and I feel like once I get to where I'm going, people mm. will be able to actually track my story. Because mm. I mean, I'm pulling that camera phone out all the time. Yeah. Um, and I'm making sure people get a chance to see what we're doing, you know, at least what I'm trying to get into, even some of the stuff with the Bridge Car movie. You guys can see some of the makings of that on my channel. If you go to my YouTube, that as well, K.O. King ENT, mm -hmm. all one word together, um, like Knockout King Entertainment. But mm -hmm. like I said, K.O. King ENT. And, yeah, Caesar Ray. Awesome. Knockout Kings, Stump the Radio. <laughs> I love it all. Thank you, guys. Uh now, what are you guys' official name for your uh, channel? Because I yeah. want to make sure I give you guys a, a, a real nice shout out. Yep. So, can we talk? So, it's if you find us on, you can find us on iTunes, um, uh, SoundCloud. Is can we talk under the Podcast Detroit? So, Podcast Detroit is sort of the governing body of the podcast. So, under Podcast Detroit, you can find Can We Talk. Caesar Ray here, kicking it with Can We Talk, and I love you guys. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Love you too. It's hilarious. Can't you guys like just turn down the mixer board and that just like I hope I didn't over talk or nothing like no. that. Guys.